guys, welcome to the Barber Room. It's me, Chris Kelly. <laughs> I'm here for another episode of Create with Chris Alive. I'm a few minutes late tonight. I um, We just got a little bit of a late start going on dinner, and um, my husband made dinner tonight, so that was kind of exciting. Hi, Raquel. Raquel was looking for me a little bit earlier, so <laughs> I'm glad you found me, my dear. <laughs> I'm going to start off by, <laughs> she said, I started texting my friends. Did I miss you? Hi, Carlene. I hope you're safely back in Florida, enjoying that warm winter sunshine there. So um, I'm going to start off with telling you guys that I have a big event coming up in January, and it's a little mini catalog mania. It's going to be a whole day from 11 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we are going to do four. <laughs> Thank you, Raquel. We're going to do four classes and each class is going to be centered around a different stamp set that's either in the mini catalog or in the celebration catalog. In both of those catalogs are going to go live on January 3rd. So if you are placing an order on January 4th, you will get to be one of the first ones to order from that catalog. So the whole day we're going to be having some chili for lunch. There will be some door prizes and raffles and lots and lots of fun. Hi Jennifer, thanks for tuning in. You too are with Carleen down there in that warm winter sunshine in Florida, right? I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> Um, so that's going to be a full day. We'll it, The charge is $50, and that includes your lunch, snacks, and like I said, we'll have some door prizes and just lots and lots of fun. So you can register from now until the 21st for that, and it is going to be here. This is kind of a sample of what we'll be doing. This is with the Forever Blossoms stamp set and some of the matching designer series paper. And then this is another one. This one's actually done with watercolor paper using one of the new embossing folders and some of the designer series paper from one of the other, I think it's the Tropical stamp set that's in there. And then this one is actually a new embossing folder. How cool is that folder, you guys? And I actually put, um, some white craft ink right on the embossing folder and then used it so um and then here's one more where i took the card the, the flower piece and just cut those apart so that's kind of a fun one and but that would be like one class that we were going to do with the Forever Blossoms stamp set. Oh, thank you. I did just get my hair cut today. So it's going to take a little bit to get used to, but I do like it. So today I'm going to share with you guys, I had um, my RAK, which is Random Act of Kindness class yesterday. And we just made, um, we made five different little gifts that you can take to just give to people throughout your day to um, encourage them to have a better day and to be a kind of person and just kind of make everybody stay a little bit brighter. So I'm going to turn my camera down and share these with you guys. So the first one we're going to do, let's turn you down here. Hang on. Hi, Patricia and Debbie. I'm glad you guys are watching. Let's see if I can get you all the way down there. To where we can see. Okay, so right here we can see pretty good. And the first one I have is this little box. It's a little hexagon kind of box. And it holds one of these little dove chocolates perfectly in it. It's kind of funny because after everybody <laughs> left, I went through my boxes and gathered all of my materials so I would be able to share with you these classes. And in all of my boxes that had candy, there were one or two pieces missing. <laughs> So I think that people got a little hungry during the um, day yesterday and, and had some candy. So this is a really easy one. We're just going to use some designer series paper, some gold foil with our ornament punch, and then our word window or classic label punch with some words on it. And then just a little um, clip. This is a middle, mini library clip on there. So 
we took a piece of this designer series paper and we did score it. I didn't bring my measurements over here with me, but I'll take pictures of my measurements and put them up there for you guys. So, oh, I guess I did. Oh, okay. So this piece of paper is four and a half by three and three eighths. So this is gonna be your four inch side here, your long side. And it is scored at two inches and four inches. Okay, so you have that little half inch space there. So it's two and four. And then you're gonna rotate it clockwise and score it at one and two and a half. And then we're gonna rotate it one more time and we're gonna score it at one and a half and three and a half, but only up to our first score line. We're not going to score it all the way across. And that's, we're going to um, do a little diagonal score on that line there. So we'll fold that on that diagonal score. Okay. And I already had these scored for them. So you're not going to score up all the way up. You're just going to go from one score line to the other score line to give it that kind of V fold there. And I just, just take my bottom pieces and we're going to cut right up to the score line. And then I'm just going to give it kind of a little mitered edge. And that just gives it a smoother look when you go to put your box together. And then this end down here, that little one inch or half inch piece right there, I'm going to completely cut that piece So I'm just going to get rid of it totally. And we'll kind of square that or angle that one up too. Okay, and then I'm to close this box, you're going to close right there on that little half inch section. And that's what's going to keep the box together. So I'm just going to put some adhesive. I'm going to try and get this away from the red so you can see. I'm just going to put a little bit of snail adhesive right there on that little half inch strip. Now this works best for me if I turn my sticky piece so I can see it, so that where I have the adhesive, I'm looking at that. And then I'm just gonna bring my other edge up to it. I'm gonna be sure they meet, and then just kind of squeeze it as I go along on that edge there, okay? So then I'm gonna take this edge here. That's the edge that I did not cut. This one's all cut to, for my closure. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna put it in my scalp tag topper punch here. Open up my punch and just slide that all the way in. And I'm gonna take it in the back and make sure I have it in there straight. So I can see I've got a, a good, good alignment on it for both sides. And then I'm just gonna punch it. And that's gonna give me my little fancy top to it. And then I'm just gonna add these two pieces in the middle are gonna get some snail. And we're just going to then close our box. And I actually want to, just gonna open it enough to put my finger in there so that I can make sure that that's good and tight down there. And put a little more snail on these two. I'm putting snail on the side that goes in. So the side that I'm gonna fold in is getting the snail. Can put my finger in there. Just make sure that's creased good. And everything's holding down there. And then it's just a matter of I am going to put my little chocolate in there. My little dove chocolate's gonna go in. And I'm gonna make sure those pieces where I scored that little V. See how nice that looks? They're just kind of popping out there. I think that's very cool. 
and we're going to take our sentiment and stamp it on some whisper white cardstock and cherry cobbler. I think cherry cobbler is one of my favorite Christmassy colors. It's a little more elegant and I think than the um, regular red is. So I'm just gonna stamp my sentiment there and punch it out with our classic label punch. All of my punches when I do words, I like to stamp first and then punch because then I can get just perfect alignment. And I'm gonna bring it down a little bit towards my right side just because I'm gonna put that little clip there, that little library clip there. Okay, put some of my things back so I don't have such a cluttered workspace because we actually are gonna do five little projects today. Well, I don't know why my voice did that there, but okay, so then we're just going to put our little words on here and you can put your ornament on the top or the bottom of it. And we're just gonna use one of these mini clips. And it is a self-closing box, so you really don't need any tape or anything at the top of it. Let's just use a silver one. I heard that it's very chic now to um, combine your foils. So it's okay to use silver and gold together. I didn't know that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just take my words like so, put my little ornament on top of it, and then use one of my silver clips and just hold it on there like that. Really super quick, easy gift idea. Just really, really like that one. Okay, and then our next one was a little box using the um, teacups. So we got these great teacup framelets, and it looks like I lost my bow in here. Okay. Um, the framelets are what they call reversible framelets. So you can cut a front and a back with it. And I just added a small box on the inside of these two cups that will hold um, two Hershey nuggets. So all I did was cut out a front and a back. So these, this is the Cup of Cheer Framelit set, uh, or the, that matches the Cup of Cheer stamp set. So then I have this little piece of paper here, and I'm gonna do my long side towards me. So my long side is here, and I'm just gonna cut up the middle score lines, my two score lines, right to my first score line. So I'm gonna have that piece right in the middle. And again, I'm just gonna kind of angle cut. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it around. And, and again, I want my long side towards me. That's the side I wanna cut. I don't want to cut my short side. I want to cut my long side. Okay. And then I'm just going to fold everything on my score lines. And I'm going to tape my first, my middle pieces are going to get taped first. And they're going to get taped on the side that faces me. So I'm just going to lay it flat. Again, with my long side facing me and tape the middle sections on the piece that's facing up. And then I'm just gonna pull it in like this and put that side over. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my box and set it just like this. So it looks kind of like a sleigh almost. And I'm going to put adhesive on these two flaps. Again, the adhesive is gonna go on the side that's facing up. And then I'm just gonna pull this up and make a little box with it. Okay. 
This one might be one of the easiest ones, except I did one other one that was really, really super easy. Okay, so now I have this little box, and I'm just going to put my candies in there. And they're going to fit best with their backs up together like that. So they're just going to kind of put their flat sides together. Yeah, they go in this way. So they just fit just like that, tight. Now you can see I have this seam on the side of my box. And I don't really like that. I like my boxes to look really, really fancy. So I would use some tear tape here. And my tear tape is probably still at my table over there because I hate to bring everything I need with me. It makes me look like I'm a professional or I know what I'm doing and I try to avoid that. So, because you guys all know I'm just winging it, right? So I'm gonna put my tape on that side that's kind of the ugly side. And then I'm just gonna put my coffee cup right on top of it. And you can decide, you can put your coffee cup like this on it or with those gorgeous stars out. So it's totally your decision. I think I did my stars on the other one. So I think I'll do this way here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna flip it over and put tape on my other side here. And again, if you're doing this at home, I would use your tear tape because you are gonna want something stronger than this. And just line this up on the other side. So now you have this great little coffee cup, real quick and easy. And I'm just gonna do a little stamp in here that says, sweet treat. I'm just gonna stamp it in some Night of Navy on some Whisper White cardstock. And I am gonna use my one inch circle punch and just punch that out. And again, I stamp my words or my sentiment first and then punch it out. And I am gonna punch up towards the bottom because I'm gonna put a ribbon up there. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space for my ribbon. All right. And then I'm just gonna take some of our copper Ribbon, I just love this ribbon. I don't know if you guys know this about this, but you can kind of open it up. So it looks almost like a fishnet kind of little texture to it, which I think is a really cool addition to um, a card or even a box of some sort. But then if you decide you don't really like that, it's not your style, you can just pull it and smooth it back out and use it as you would just a regular ribbon. So it's really kind of, you can play around with it and get some different looks to it. So I'm just gonna do some little, a little bunny ear bow here. And we're gonna adhere this with a glue dot. And I don't know about you guys, but I like to save my glue dots that come in my paper pumpkin. Love, love, love my paper pumpkin. If you guys don't have a subscription to paper pumpkin, you really need one. That's like a, my um, monthly glass of wine. It's my relaxation. Um, it does more for me to help me relax and have some fun and enjoy than even a massage um, because it just comes as a little bit of crafting. I can take it with me wherever I go. This month mine's gonna go on an airplane with me. Um, you can take it to a hotel room. Everything you need is right in that kit. It comes right to your door and it, um, ha it, it has everything. It has the little glue dots, it has, um, your stamp set, it has little ink spots. Everything you need is right inside it. So you have a little sheet of um, my little glue dots and I'm just gonna peel that off there and put it right on the back of my bow. And I'm gonna make it look really, really hard because it's super easy. And everything that's really, really easy, I like to make it look really hard. So you guys decide, oh, wow, I'm gonna need some help. <laughs> okay, so then I'm just going to take my cup. I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna hold my cup from this side, and that's gonna be the front for me. And I'm just gonna put my little sweet treat on there. 
I'm going to peel the back off my dimensional and just stick it right onto my words right there. Okay, how's that? Super fun, right? And this is just if you're driving through McDonald's for a morning, morning coffee or if you have that coupon for the McCafe special, you can do that. And just give this to the gal who's checking you out or who hands you her coffee. It'll make everybody's day just a little bit brighter when they have a piece of chocolate, right? Okay, let's do this pizza box next. They did this one in two colors. This is the Perfectly Plaid Sweet with um, the punch and then this gorgeous paper and the ribbon comes with it. But just decorated the top of the box real quick. And there are nine, we've been messing with this box all day, but it will hold nine of these Dove chocolates. Okay. And this is one of our pizza boxes. We do have them in gold this year, and the gold box would have been very, very pretty to make yours with, too. They are um, food safe, so you can really put anything in them. And we also did them in this gorgeous blue, the navy blue, and then added navy candies in there. So what we did was... We took a piece of gold foil paper, piece of paper from the Perfectly Plaid Suite, two punches, a little circle where we stamped Merry Christmas and punched it out, and then a little piece of ribbon that was tied in a knot. Okay, so those were kind of our supplies for this one. <laughs> I just flipped them all over. Oh my, what a day, what a day. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece of gold foil paper and I'm just going to punch a two inch circle right in the middle of my paper. Okay, and I am going to then take this piece of designer series paper and you can use it on the other side too. Our paper's so gorgeous. It doesn't really matter which side you choose it with, but I kind of like my metals and my foils to, to match up there. So I'm just gonna take that and layer it right on top of my piece of gold foil. And then it's gonna get that gold circle that I just punched out. I'm going to put that about, I don't know, maybe right there. And my words. I'm actually going to slide my words right up under there. Just a tad bit. Because I want to put my, um, my ribbon down there at the bottom of it. So let's go up like that. And... I'm going to put that on my box. Your pizza box, when you have it, will it'll look like this when you get it. This shiny side is the food safe side. So that's the side you want to be the inside of your box. And you're just going to fold on all these really great score lines. And it goes together super duper easy. It goes together so easy, I don't even know if I could make it look hard. And that says a lot because most of the time I can make everything look really hard between the camera and me being left-handed and trying to get you in a little space where you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to fold my sides in and my top down. And the back's going to go in and that top will go down right around it. And they all fold right inside the box. Okay. So I'm going to take this piece. Oh my goodness, like a train wreck here. And this is the back of my gold foil. I'm gonna put that right down on the top of my box. And then because I'm gonna um, place my trees on there where that score line is and I want them to stick up, I'm gonna use my green glue. So I'm just gonna kind of fold them in half and make a good crease in them. 
where they're already scored. And I did do all of the scoring for the gals in my class. And we put all of our boxes together first and then they went back in and did the decorations for them. And that seemed to work out best because sometimes it's hard to know where you're gonna cut up and all of that. So we did it with holding your long side up. So I'm gonna fold that, hold my long side up and put some glue on it. And that glue is just gonna get tacky for a second here. While I put my glue away. And I am going to get my bow ready. I'm gonna put my bow on with one of these handy dandy little glue dots from our paper pumpkin. And it has sticky, so you just take that back off and put it right on my bow. And my bow's gonna go right there. And I would also fill my box up at this point too. Then I'm just gonna put my tree on there. And because you're using the glue, you have a little bit of play in it. And I'm gonna stack the other one right on top of it. And I do want them to not stick all the way down because I want kind of that fancy little three-dimensional tree look to it. So there's that one little punch in here and this one is a little it's kind of like a cracker box only it's only a cracker box on one end this is one that I did some um, Christmas gifts for my team with so I'm gonna use the snowman paper with it and uh, then make just this cracker box and it actually holds a little um, hand sanitizer on the inside of it Okay, so I have a picture of what this looks like with all of the measurements on it, and I will put that on the um, on my post for you, so you have a little picture of it and what to go by. So it is the one side is measured just at one inch, and this is going to be my bottom side. Now the top of it, we actually want to get this squishy part at the top of our box. So we're gonna do that with three score lines. And one is at a half an inch, so it's the long side, long side looking at you. So one of them is actually half an inch, which I'm gonna pull down. And that one we are not gonna cut at all. And then my one inch score line, I'm gonna fold back towards me. And my one and a half inch fold line is gonna go under towards you. Okay, so that's gonna give me that kind of springy look that I want at the top of it. So I'm gonna take some adhesive, and again, if you have the tear and tape, I would use it. And I'm just gonna put it on this half an inch. So it's the half inch score line on my short side. And again, whenever I do any folding like that, I like to Take my adhesive and fold it so I am looking at it. And then fold the other half up to meet it. And I can choose either end, but I just wanna make sure I get it straight on that end. And then just slowly squish it together all the way down. Okay? And then what I'm gonna do is where I have my three score lines, I'm gonna actually fold my box flat. So you can see, these are my three score lines, okay? So I have my half inch, my one inch, and my one and a half inch. So I don't want to cut this. This is gonna be the very top of my box. So what I'm gonna do is cut in where my seams are to my half inch line, and then up from there. So I have that little triangle from my half inch to my one inch to my one and a half inch. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this seam. 
I'm gonna cut into my one inch and then out from my one inch. And then I'm gonna fold it the other way. The bigger you make your diamond, the more play it's gonna have here so it will squish down farther. But you don't wanna make your diamond so big that it touches that diamond there. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna cut up to my one inch mark and then over for my one inch mark. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. And you could also use a punch for this if you wanted to go in with a square punch. But what you're gonna do is you'll, you'll have a box that now looks like this. So it's gonna go down and they'll squeeze in. Okay, see how that's gonna go together? And then at this bottom part down here, we have that one inch score line all the way around. So I'm just gonna cut all of my edges up to my score line. And if you have a problem seeing your score line, just fold it. You can easily fold it right on your score line if you want to. And they're all gonna fold in like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just take this bottom piece and put it adhesive on the side that's looking up at me. Fold them all in and then that one down that way. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take some Hey Pumpkin Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin Antibacterial and drop it in there. Easy, easy, easy. And then we have this great designer series paper that matches the stamps. The stamp set and the, um, there's a little accessory pack that goes with it. This is just such an adorable one. So I've cut this little piece out with the framelit. And then I have some designer series paper here. Can you guys see how glittery and fun that snowman is? I think it's just too adorable, right? So I'm going to just punch him out. And we'll get him in there and get them lined up. And remember, you can always use a sticky note to do this if it's getting to you. So I'm just gonna line them up and punch them out. And then I'm gonna take a piece of black paper and punch a hat out. And then I'm gonna take the espresso paper and just punch out two little arms. Okay. And I am going to start by just adhering this little piece of Coastal Cabana paper to the front of my box. And I decide what the front of my box is because here's my seam where I taped it shut and I don't really want people to that to be the first thing that they notice. So I put that towards the back of my box and I make this the front. Because I have my little antibacterial soap in there, I can press it down on there. And I'm gonna actually put my snowman's hands on with some more glue dots. I just put this sticky part down and I'm gonna peel that back up. Remember, making it look as difficult as I can because I like to make it look that way. I don't want you guys to think it's really like easy or anything because I'm sure you can see that, right? <laughs> okay. So, there's his hands and we're just gonna put some adhesive on the back of him or her. She looks like she could easily be a her with all her cold little cheeks going on there. And I'm going to put this on with a dimensional maybe. Pop it up a little bit. That might be cute for his hat. And I have a dimensional that I've kind of cut in half so it'll fit on there. You could use a mini dimensional there too, very, very easily. Okay, 
So there we go. He's kind of all set with arms and a hat. And I'm going to take some of this white linen thread. This thread is in our new catalog, which is coming out in January. I just love it. You can actually color it. So you can make it any color that you want. And I'm just going to tie that around there. And... Bring it in so that it'll kind of squishy close it down. Okay. And I'm going to just bring it around and tie it in a little bow. I like to do bows whenever I can. But I always have to do the little bunny ears over and under. See it up a bit, make it smaller, and then let's make that one a little. So there we go. I have a nice little bow there, and I'm gonna take the little tail and just give it a little trim on both sides. So how about that? Wouldn't your coworker like to come in in the morning and see that on his or her desk? That's a fun little one to do. And then I have one more, and this one I cannot wait to do for Valentine's Day. I'm super excited about it. And we got some things in our new catalog that are just perfect. There's two hard punches, um, and one of them's a scalloped, and one of them's regular. I did this one. You can see the, um, the scallop one there, and then just the regular one that layers right on top of it. So I love hearts and Valentine's Day. So that's going to be perfect because you know how you get the hearts, the little um, Russell Stover hearts that have the caramel or the raspberry whipped cream in the middle. So I'm going to do one of these little boxes for that heart. But this one has an actual snowman in it. And this one again uses some of that really pretty um, Let It Snow designer series paper. So what we're going to do is start off with this little, the, you could not make a simpler box than this. And in order to get the dimensions for it, I just measured the size of it, or the side of it, and it's a half an inch. So I wanted a half an inch square mark at the bottom so it would stand up in there. Then I just measured it from one side to the other here, and it's two and a half inches. I love that our grid paper comes with those markings. So it's two and a half inches. So I added a half an inch on each side, so it's three, okay? So I'm just gonna score along these lines. That's an easy, super easy way to make a box that will fit anything. And it's not really a box because I haven't made a lid, it's only one piece, so it's not really a box. It's more like a sleeve to just to slide my candy down into which is kind of nice because then you can leave a little bit of it showing at the top if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna cut in on my score lines on the side. So again, long side towards you. <laughs> so you want the long side up towards you and I'm just gonna cut that little half inch mark in the middle. I'm gonna cut it on both sides so that it's really super easy to fold it up and tuck them in because we want that little tab just to tuck right inside. And I like to do my tab first and then put tape on the other side of my box because I'm, not, I'm never really sure where I'm gonna put my tape. And if I don't think about it, I get it on the wrong side. So this kind of helps me. If I put my tape in the middle, because I know that's gonna be inside my box. So I'm just gonna put tape Gosh, I put tape all over the bottom of my box. Okay, so I'm just gonna put tape right there and then bring the side of my box up. Okay, and then bring this side up and there is half of my box, okay? If I set this one down like this, then I know 
I'm going to add my tape here and here. I don't have to guess. Do I want it on this side? Do I want it to go inside here? I don't, I want it right on these outside pieces. And I can still lay them flat with just by leaving this piece up. Oh, out of adhesive. Hmm, here we go. Okay, so then we'll put one here. And then I'm just going to close it. And again, where that seam is, I want that to be the back of my box. Okay? And they're both going to close the same way. And you could not be any quicker of a design than this. I just took a piece of the gorgeous designer series paper, and you could even put it on this side if you wanted to. I'm just going to put some adhesive on that. And I want to make sure I have it going in the right direction. And again, when I was when I was would do this at home, I would use some tear tape on it as opposed to your regular snail or some of your tumbo glue, whatever your strongest adhesive that you like to work with is. That's what I would use. Okay, and I have a little bit of red satin thread here, satin ribbon, and I stamped out the words "Let it snow," and I'm just going to use my label punch box for my darling label and again I'm going to put it down towards the bottom so I have some space for my ribbon there. I just love our punches because you can use them that way and get a, a really nice um, centered image and I'm just going to take my hole punch and I'm going to punch it twice there so I get kind of a punch that a hole that looks like that. And I'm just going to, I'm going to put a dimensional on the back of that because I know I want it to pop up. So I'll put a dimensional down there. And that's just going to go on my box like that. So I'm going to take some ribbon and put it around the back of my box. And I am just going to make sure it's flat back there because if anybody could get it so it wasn't flat, it would be me. And then I'm just going to kind of make a ribbon point there and push it through and I'm going to hold it over this way so I have lots of room to put the other side through. And I'll just do kind of a little point there and then pull it through. And now I'm going to actually take the back off my dimensional, decide where I want this and put it down. Stick my hand in there. And then I'm just going to pull these through until I get, get them good and tight there. And I'm going to tie them in a knot. You can put a bow there, and I did leave enough ribbon so you could tie a bow if you wanted to. But I'm just going to make one quick little knot there. And then fancy it up and cut my ribbon. There we go. Okay, how's that? Super quick and easy, and I'm just gonna put my candy right inside there. And like I said, I cannot wait to do this with um, Valentine's Day. It's gonna be so much fun. Okay, so that's it. That was our random act of kindness class. Let's get you guys back up here so I can see who's there. Okay. Hey, Judy. How's the weather there in Florida? There's a lot of you guys from Florida watching. I'm getting excited to see you after Christmas. You'll be so glad to get home where it's all nice and chilly for you. <laughs> And Rhonda, thanks for watching. And Carol and Debbie, the snowman's your favorite? Um, the snowman hand sanitizer one? This one? Or this one? 
I kind of like them both. You could actually get these both as a gift. They would look really cute if you put them in a um, cello bag together. That would be really cute too. Yeah. So lots of ones. And I do, uh, the hand sanitizer, boy, you cannot get enough of those. I have those everywhere. A couple in my purse. We're getting ready to get on a plane in about, well, a week from tomorrow we'll be getting on a plane and I'm going to see my granddaughter. So um, I am starting this morning doing my extra echinacea, which is an immune system booster. And I am packing my... Um, <laughs> Thank you. It is a very fresh haircut. I just got it today. So it probably will never look this way again because I can't style it the way they do. But... <laughs> But thank you. I'm glad that you like it, Debbie. So um, I am going to be sticking hand sanitizers in my purse and my backpack and my computer bag, all of those things, because the germs are rampant this time of year and there are so many people that are sick. So you're kind of giving the gift of health when you give that hand sanitizer. Oh, Carol, thank you. I, I really like my hair. My hair is kind of one of those things that I always think, oh, it's just hair. It'll grow back. But I love when I get compliments. So thank you very much. And I will see you guys next Monday night. It will, um, I'll be getting ready to, to leave on Tuesday morning. And hopefully I am going to share some things with you that we'll actually be doing on the January 4th date for the Mini Mania. And I hope that I'm going to see you there. Again, we're going to be doing, making 16 cards. And we're going to have lunch and we're going to do some door prizes. We're just going to have a great time. So I hope that I see you there. And if I don't see you next week, have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Bye-bye.